Hello everyone and welcome back to how to make custom rockets in Kerbal Space Program and in this episode we're going to talk about how to import your own model into Kerbal Space Program from the 3D modeling program of your choice. In this case we are in Blender. I am not going to try to tell you how to do 3D modeling yet. Uh, first of all I have to learn a bit more of it myself. I'm not very good at it. But uh, here we have a model in Blender and it is an entire stage. It is not a fuel tank and engine separately. This is a sort of a simplified version of an asterisk stage, though it probably needs more spherical things on the bottom here and some fiddly bits that I have not added. But uh, for now, it will suffice for a demonstration. And uh, if we take a look at the model here, uh, we have a material on it and I'm not gonna tell you how to texture uh, your models in Blender again yet uh, but if we take a look I've done sort of a cheaty simplified way of doing this in that if we take a look at edit mode all um, the UV unwrap has been done by a project from view so if you press U in Blender there are a number of UV mapping options UV mapping is how you make your textures and I use project from view which means uh, the UV unwrap will look exactly the way it looks in the render window from an orthographic view like that. And that's how we see it here. If you've ever seen a 3D model with its texture unwrapped, usually it's quite a mess. Uh, so as long as your model is symmetrical around an axis and you're not particularly concerned about the top and bottom, in this case the bottom of the nozzle is not going to be a big deal, and the top is going to be attached to something else. Uh, project from view is sort of a cheaty way of uh, simplifying the whole UV unwrap thing. So uh, that's how this texture was made and uh, you might consider that as an option. But uh, yeah, otherwise uh, it's not that bad. It's, uh, I exaggerate sometimes, but I'm not, not going to discuss it in detail here. You can only have one material uh, for a part if you're importing into Unity and then into Kerbal Space Program. So we only have one material to use and it's important not to use more than that. We not only have the part itself, which is this whole thing, and originally it was multiple parts. Uh, there was a top cylinder that I did some extrusion and scaling in order to get the top tank. There was another cylinder here for the nozzle and uh, more cylinders for the struts. And then they were positioned and then joined. So that's how this was put together. Um, and it's important to make sure that there, if there are parts that have an inside to them, like the inside of this nozzle, that you keep in mind the normals. And so there are normals facing inward so that there is you know, a visible surface there and there are normals facing outward. So you can see there is an actual edge. There are certain faces that represent the edge of the model. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. So anyway, uh, that's just to make sure it looks proper in the Kerbal Space Program once you get it in there. And um, we also have a collider. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do animations here in this video. That's a topic for another day. But um, we do have to have a collider. And the collider, in this case, only covers the tank portion. There's no collider on the nozzle for this. And uh, it's very simplified. If we turn off the main model outside of edit mode, that's it. Uh, so it's excessively simple, and you could make it more complicated. And some things need them to be more complicated. But when you think about what's going to happen with this tank, people are going to try and attach RCS thrusters to the surface maybe, maybe solar panels, um, maybe RCS thrusters to this part. And maybe I could have uh, mimicked the curve of this a little bit better. Uh, but this is simplified and the collider is not going to take much overhead as far as system resources. And that's the important thing about the collider. Make sure it's not overly complicated. Uh, so that the system has to do more work. Okay, so yeah, that is the model. And we are going to export the main model itself separately from the collider. So we're going to go export. I use Collada for stuff that doesn't have animations. And then for stuff that does have animations, you need to use FBX. 
um, and it's a particular version of FBX for that. But no animations, Collada is fine, and we're just gonna call this asterisk dot dae in whatever folder you've got this in this case curl parts folder in blender and so we will remember where we put it and so oh that exported two objects that's a problem no what we want to do is selection only and uh, might want to apply modifiers and one modifier you might want to check out before you actually commit to uh, making the file is if you've done any smoothing of the model, and that's pretty typical, you want to make sure to uh, add modifier edge split and then apply it uh, to make sure that at least the edges are sharp instead of rounded or smoothed over. And so that's all applied and that would be a good thing. So. Uh, now we make sure we've selected that part and export Collada and we just want asterisk and we're going to select selection only and export. Okay, so we've exported one object which is correct. Now we're going to select this object and we're going to export that and that we don't care about smoothing or anything else. We're going to call it asterisk collider. Okay, so, oops, we actually have to show it. <laughs> okay, so, asterisk collider, and now it says exported one object. All right, so everything is good, and we don't need to do anything in Blender anymore. We've got the texture file as well, so we can just open up Unity. Actually, before going to Unity, I wanted to point out that we are oriented in 0, 0 in the X, Y plane. So like that, X is red, Y is green. And so we're at 0, 0 here. And uh, as far as the Z axis is concerned, uh, we could have actually put the bottom of the model at uh, 0 as well. So that when we create our attachment node, then we would just specify 0, 0, 0 for that one. That'll simplify things. But we had not done that. We had put it in this position in the DAE file, the Collada file. And so we can use the 3D cursor uh, to just click on the location to figure out exactly what the Z number is. Uh, these will be 0 and 0. They're close enough to that right now. But um, here we see that we'll probably have a bottom attachment node at negative 1.52 and at the top uh, 2.67 we can check back in blender when we're writing the configuration file to make sure that but before you export the Collada file you might want to place the model in a position that will make uh, adding the attachment nodes easier so when you open up unity you have the option to open up a particular project and we're gonna create a new project I'm gonna call uh, KSP uh, import <laughs> in all caps, I guess. Okay, and create project. Uh, actually, right there, I could have selected add asset package, uh, which we will have to do. We have to import KSP part tools, and but we can also do it here uh, under assets, import package, custom package. Okay, so you're going to have to search the web and find part tools. And so there's a part tools asset bundle. And we're going to import that. And when you import part tools, um, it gives you this window, import Unity package. And we're going to import all these things. And so we're just going to say import. And now it's uh, unpacking all the KSP assets. And most importantly, the thing to export into KSP, but also the KSP shaders. So we're going to add a new object. Uh, let's create a new folder. Uh, we've got the as uh, part tools assets, but create a folder parts. Okay. And we're going to open that up. And we're, I'm going to browse in Explorer for the place that I put the part that we exported from uh, Blender. So in Kerbal Parts, I'm going to grab, oh, let's see, 
we've got the asterisk, asterisk, and the asterisk collider. So just drag that. Okay, and it added materials folder. We're not going to add the material just yet. That's that PNG file. We're just going to add the collider. Uh, you're going to have to pay attention to exactly how things are rotated between Blender and Unity. They're going to be oriented differently sometimes. And when you import them into KSP, they might be rotated differently too. So you might have to go back into Blender and readjust the rotation of things. But here, this looks good. I don't know why it always starts the rotation at negative 89.981. But just because I'm picky, I do that. Um, scaling, uh, normally, uh, I guess the scale had not been applied. If we take a look here, and this is going to be instructive, uh, we see that the Z axis has not been applied yet. So on this, uh, you should um, control A, apply scale. Hmm. Apply scale. And now that's set to one. So in object mode, just make sure control A, uh, apply position, apply, uh, you can apply rotation. That could be a good thing to do. Rotation and scale, and then export it again. Well, uh, while we're here, why don't we just export it again? Okay, so we've dragged it in and we want to actually, let's save the scene quickly. And I don't really want to say, well, okay, fine. Uh, scene one. Okay. And what we actually want to do is add a game object, create empty, and I'm just going to leave a game object. And we're going to make sure it's position is zero, zero, zero. And we're going to add KSP part tools. So in when you click add components, you're going to have a bunch of stuff here. You want to go to the KSP section, go to part tools here and set your game data directory. I suggest you don't put it directly in game data. Uh, you might want to find your own data directory. So it's thinking about that and it has decided that it is good. And so I'm going to call this asterisk and we're going to find exactly where I'm going to put it. That folder right there. Okay. Um, I changed the texture format to PNG. And we are not going to hit right just yet. Project production check marked is fine. Show materials, I don't think we need to. Okay, so that's setting up the game object. Make sure the position is zeroed out and the scale is all one. And you've got the model name. Uh, you've set the folder for it and that your texture format. I prefer PNG. So now we drag the model in. Okay. Now, now the model doesn't have a rotation in the Z and all its scale is 1 and rotation negative 90. Uh, mesh renderer, yes, that's what determines whether it shows up. So if it doesn't have a mesh renderer, it's not going to show up. It's not going to be visible. And that's going to be important for our collider. And uh, KSP, um, let's say we're not, we don't have a bump map. Let's just say a specular shader. Shader obviously is what will have the texture applied. And so we need to import that texture now. So we import asterisk.png. And on asterisk here, we select texture. And you'll see asterisk pop up here once you've imported it down here. And so we apply that. And now it has its texture. So that's good. Now how do we do the collider? Well, the collider, import it directly into game object first to make sure it shares the orientation with game object. And its position should have been applied earlier. But this is OK. And just because I want to, I'll put minus 90. And we can see that it has a sort of um, shape to it, and that is correct. And instead of having it separate now, once we've uh, pulled it into game object, we'll put it under asterisk, but now it's not going to change its orientation, so that's good. It's in the right place. We do not need it to show up, so we're not going to have a mesh renderer, so we remove that component, 
and we don't need an animator either. Uh, we do need to have physics. And so we got add component physics. We got to add a mesh collider and make sure it's convex. And now it is a proper collider for this. And so you're going to have to make your colliders in roughly the same shape. Remember the collider is what allows you to surface attach things to it and also what it will impact at. So right now if this uh, you know slams into something at the nozzle it's not going to impact which might be a problem for you if you're trying to land on the nozzle. So uh, you might want to add another collider for the nozzle and because the colliders have to be convex you can't make a single collider also cover the nozzle as well. You're going to have to make a separate uh, collider file for just the nozzle and add that in as well. Pull it into uh, game object and then drag it into uh, uh, underneath the asterisk and make the asterisk the parent of it. Uh, but you can have as many collider objects as you want and uh, you can select them all at the same time. Let's say you have like 12 of them and uh, you need to all make them all mesh collider. You can actually select them all at the same time, remove all of their mesh renderers all at the same time and add in the mesh collider. But for now I'm going to keep it simple and leave it like this. Now we have a few other things to deal with. First of all, uh, this needs to have thrust coming out of the nozzle and we would like to add that to it. So if we recall there is, well let's just add a new game object, create empty and we are going to call this rename thrust actually I believe it's lowercase by convention thrust transform it doesn't need to be called this but this is the conventional thing to do in Kerbal Space Program this is what it's called most of the time thrust transform and we are going to uh, reorient it it needs to have the blue arrow going out in the direction of the thrust so right now that was not the case Actually, let's just uh, type in the rotation here. Uh, negative 90, no. So not that axis. That's the right axis, wrong direction. Okay, so now we have the blue arrow going out in the direction of the thrust. And we can pull it. Uh, I said negative 0.52 for where the bottom end of this actually is. And so now it's oriented at the edge of the nozzle where the thrust is going to happen. And that's also where the plume is going to be. So once we have plumes and everything, uh, the game will automatically create your plumes, but you can have real plumes or something like that. Recreate it for you. You do not need to create an emitter in Unity for anything like that. Thank goodness. Uh, that's built into the game. So um, if you are using RCS thrusters instead of using thrust transform and we're going to have asterisk be the parent now instead of using thrust transform you're going to call it RCS thrust and you're actually going to have to orient it to the green arrow not the blue arrow so it'll be the green arrow the y-axis for RCS thrust the blue arrow the z-axis for the regular thrust Okay, so now we've got thrust transform, we've got collider, we've got the model, we've got the texture, and it looks like we're good to go. Uh, the place it is in the world is the same as it is in Blender, for now. <laughs> and so uh, we will get to write it. So let us write it. We click write. And after you click right, the net result is that in the folder that you chose, you got a model and you've got your texture. Now you can replace this texture with, directly with the texture that you had before. Um, in other words, if I wanted to pull it from the, uh, directly from the texture I had in Blender, you can replace it with that. And of course, you can directly edit this in uh, any image editing program. You do not need to go through Unity again to re-import this texture and uh, mess with it. So don't worry about that. And uh, yeah, you do not need to rely on Unity to create the texture file for you. Uh, but we have our model. One thing we need now in order to get into Kerbal Space Program is a configuration. And I've already made a configuration for this, but in order to show you how to do it, we're going to do it from scratch. 
So new, we're going to make a text document, asterisk.cfg. Oh, let's get rid of that, asterisk.cfg. Mm -hmm. And we're going to open it up in Notepad. And we're going to take a look at the squad parts. Now, this is a combination of a fuel tank as well as an engine. So let's start with the fuel tank. I think it's about the size of a T200. Okay, so let's say that. Actually, maybe it's a little bit bigger than that, come to think of it. We'll have to look inside the game to see what tank it is closest to. And then engine-wise, uh, I was thinking that this was more or less like, I think LV-909. LV-909 would be a good thing. All right, so we're going to start with the LV-909. And we're going to take this. I'm just going to copy it first, and then we'll see what we have to fix. Now, notice uh, right at the bottom here, thrust transform name, thrust transform. Sounds good. Okay, it's not going to be called Liquid Engine 3, it's going to be called EDB Asterisk. And I'm going to be the author. The mesh is going to be asterisk.mu. Right? That's the mesh that we have in this folder. Asterisk.mu. Scale, uh, we are going to just put 1.0. Uh, sometimes that'll be different depending on whether you have it as an FBX. FBX files tend to be like a uh, hundred times smaller, and so you might have to scale it up by a hundred times. Okay, node stack top. Well, that's where we go back into Blender and we uh, clicked up here, go to 3D cursor. Uh, it wasn't really 2.7, I think it's more like 2.06 and then negative 1.5. Let's say 2.06 and negative 1.52. This is the Y location. And so 2.06 for the top and negative 1.52. Okay, and make sure that this number, which is the one, two, three, four, fifth number is one. Mean, and that means that the attachment node is going to point upwards. And then the bottom one, you want it to point downwards. The, uh, the last three, these digits are rotation. These uh, first three are location in X, Y, and Z. And the last digit is the size of the node. So there's a size one, size two, depending on how big your tank is. We could make it size two, actually. Anyway, uh, we'll say advanced rocketry, that's fine. We'll have the standard uh, exhaust flames, except let's have them at the right location. Okay, I'm not going to change the cost right now. We don't have auto localization for this. We're just going to call it asterisk stage. Manufacturer, um, let's just say EDB for now. And rocket stage modeled after the European asterisk stage. Okay, attachment rules. I like to attach every which way. <laughs> uh, so each of these represents a certain type of attachment and what you are going to allow. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't have documentation there. I wonder if one of these has... Uh, uh, some of the squad files actually say which of uh, what each of these means, or you could look it up. But uh, honestly, uh, when I want to attach it the way I want to attach it, I want it to attach that way, so I just put one in all of them. Um, it's an engine nozzle, so we're good on that. And I'm going to leave max temp, and um, those are fine. I'm going to put asterisk as a tag. Okay, module engines thrust transform, right? We did call it thrust, thrust transform. I'm going to keep it at the same thrust. Uh, we're gonna make it a duplicate of the of the Terrier engine. It's just going to look better. <laughs> uh, we do have a gimbal on it. Gimbal transform name is Thrust Transform right now, but um, we should later on want to aspire to create an actual gimbal animation. 
so, but it uh, does have the actual gimbal range, it's just, it's just not going to look like that. I think that's fine. We'll see. We'll see if there's anything else we need to change. But so far, so good as far as configuring that. But we have another hitch, right? We have the fuel tank. Well, we can just take the resource liquid fuel and resource oxidizer, copy. And we are going to uh, just uh, dump it in here, perhaps after the main engine stuff. And let's make it a little bit more. We'll see how it looks and maybe it will be justified. So after this, we have our configuration for the asterisk. And we have saved it in here under parts. And I have a bunch of parts. And I'm going to now copy it. And we are going to plop it into this KSP 1.3 folder. Game data. I've created my own EDB mods folder. And I had an asterisk, but I have now rewritten it with this new asterisk. And we'll see how this new asterisk works. So it's a good idea to test your parts in as bare bones a version of the game as possible. So it loads quickly because you're probably going to have to reload it a lot to fix problems. So keep that in mind and also start off with your parts in stock and then later on add the realism overall configurations to it or other configurations to it if you want to um, just as a principle and uh, yeah if you need to learn how to add realism overall configurations to parts I've probably already made some videos on that but we might talk about it later as well so here's our, our Astra stage looking good Looking quite spiffy. Let's look in there. Um, yep, uh, things seem all right. And 2.5 tons. We uh, that's two tons of fuel and 0.5 tons of engine. A little bit off, right? Because uh, uh, the engine itself is a duplicate of the Terrier engine, which is 0.5 tons on its own. So the dry mass of the tank should be a little bit more than that. Uh, we should have an additional 0.25 tons, so 0.75 ton dry mass altogether to match the stock stuff. But before we fix that, let's make sure that the tank, well, it, it looks pretty much exactly like this tank, huh? And this has 720 uh, liquid fuel and 880 oxidizer. It's uh, eight tons of fuel and then one ton dry mass. So really the dry mass of this, given a 0.5 ton engine is 1.5 tons. So we'll fix that to make sure it's balanced with the game. Let's go back to our configuration file. So seems like it ought to be 720 and 720 and 880. And this dry mass should be 1.5. Okay, and this is the dry mass not including the fuel. Okay. FS off offset we'll have to check up on. Let's take a look at let's take a look at how it works outside of the VAB and on the launch pad. So we have to add a remote guidance unit and some power. Attachment node is good. We can see that's attaching proper. And how about the bottom? That's that's pretty good too. That's excellent. Obviously check your attachment nodes. Let's check the collider. So thruster block. Thruster block is probably my favorite thing to use to check the collider. So you can move it along and you can see, see, see right, right here. It's a little bit far out and that's because we used a cone to approximate that surface. You can see over here it's out and it dips in and then it's out again. And then there's no collider on the nozzle, right? So you'll, you might want to put a collider on the nozzle and uh, you should now know how to do that okay we've got power we've got a controller let's have some launch clamps okay so we're all set here now throttle up say us on hmm well it is a vacuum engine it seems awful small doesn't it though Maybe this is not the best effect to apply to this, the Terrier effect. Or is there some sort of scaling thing going on? 
it is consuming fuel at a decent rate. And if we take a look at uh, Delta V stats, it's great, but it's not carrying any payload. Sea level thrust is not enough to get off the ground, so let's make sure that it falls. And it does. And let's take a look at the collider. Mm -hmm. The nozzle did not collide with the ground, it was the tank that collided with the ground and caused the explosion. What would it look like with the LVT-45's effects? So to change the effects, you have to choose which of these to use. So we've got FX Exhaust Flame Blue Small here, whereas the LVT-45 has Exhaust Flame Blue. Um, I like blue. I mean, blue is good. Let's uh, go with Exhaust Flame Blue instead of Blue Small. Exhaust Light Blue. Uh, well, that's consistent. I'm just going to go with what the LVT-45 has. And find sparks for flame out sounds good to me. Um, once you replace them with the whole real plume thing or some other way of replacing the effects, there are plenty of ways to do that. And I'm not going to go into it right now, but let's just make sure that we've got the numbers right and we'll call it a day for now. Okay, one point to remember, and I actually forgot it, uh, is that if you're editing the files in a separate folder outside of game data, do remember that when you make the edits, you have to copy the configuration file back into the game because you haven't edited the configuration file in the game directly. So you need to copy and paste to make the updates happen. Uh, same with the model file and texture if you modify those. So yeah, so do make sure to sort out your folders properly. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got here. Astra stage weight uh, 9.5 tons altogether now, and so that's eight. That's correct. Ignition. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's all right. Um, we're not gonna actually launch now. Our sea level thrust weight ratio is not good at all. Our overall thrust weight ratio ain't great either. But since we have more fuel, our delta V overall is excellent. But, I mean, it is basically a Terrier engine pushing one of those uh, nine-ton tanks. So um, it's going to crash into the ground if we let go of it. Yep. And I'd say that's all right crash resistance, right? Right. So anyway, um, that is how you import a part into Kerbal Space Program. I don't know if that was as clear as I necessarily wanted it to be. If you have any questions, please do ask, and we'll continue on the topic of custom parts in Kerbal Space Program in future videos. Uh, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.